Hey everyone, my name is Ben and I appreciate you watching this video today. We are going to work on removing a wash plate from a Whirlpool based washing machine. Um, this one's actually a Kenmore built or a Kenmore brand washer, but it's really a Whirlpool. And this one has a plastic wash plate in it. And the last video we used screws to remove the wash plate and it works for LGs if you're willing to kind of tear up the wash plate just to get it out. But in other cases, you need to remove the wash plate more gently because you need to use it and you don't need to you know, blow it up or destroy it by any means necessary. So we're going to use a few different techniques today to try to get this wash plate off. We tried earlier out of the video to take it out and it was a mess. We couldn't get it out just through using a screwdriver or a belt or anything like that. It's in there really bad. So we're going to try a few different techniques today to open it up. So just follow along with me and let's have some fun. The first step to work on this wash plate is to remove the center cap of the washer which holds the plate screw on using a flathead screwdriver. Then we are going to take a ratchet that will fit the transmission screw to remove it. These are usually 16 millimeters or 7 sixteenths. The screw on this was actually horrible to get off, so prior to filming this video, we did have to hit it with an impact gun, which is pretty rare on these types of units. Next, I am going to try to clean and strip away the gunk underneath the plate using this bag of citric acid. This stuff is the best, cheapest thing we've come across to clean washers, and I'm going to put about one to one and a half cups in this washer. When we add hot water to it, it will loosen up whatever is keeping the plate stuck on, or we hope so. Once you have the citric acid in the tub, there are a few things you can do. You can either simply set the machine on a wash cycle and let it basically run a pretend load of clothes, or you can fill the tub up with hot water and use the machine's test mode to run agitation or spin without allowing the citric acid filled water to be pumped out quickly. If you decide to run just a regular cycle, you may want to make sure it's on the hottest water setting possible or run a cold wash cycle while switching the cold and hot lines so only hot water gets in the tub. Either way, you may want to lift the lid up while operating these tests, so I am going to bypass the lid lock by unscrewing the striker with a Torx screwdriver. Then I'm going to insert the striker into the lid lock, which will allow me to lift the lid when I need to do that. With all of this done, I can now engage the washer's test system to make it run agitation cycle without pumping the citric acid filled water away. For a full explanation on how to get into this system and all the other options you have, check out my Maytag video link in the description or the on-screen card. I'm selecting the manual test mode, then engaging the lid lock which is required to have the machine run agitation or spin cycle on test. Generally the commands that I'm doing here are the same among all Whirlpool built washers, but you can always find the service manual in the washer to confirm that, and you can find the booklet again by watching the same video I mentioned that had the tests mode and where to find this booklet. With the gentle mode selected, we're going to go ahead and run it for quite some time by pressing the start button to begin the test. In doing this video, we found that running the test cycle only runs the agitation for about a minute. So unlike using a regular wash mode, you may have to babysit it and you may want to run it multiple times. You can press the start button to stop the mode and switch to spin mode or on any other desired mode too, which is what we did in this test run. It's super gross, but if you zoom into the washer now, you can see all the junk that's floating due to the citric acid, showing that it's working as intended. From here, I am now putting the washer into a drain mode to get the nasty water out before I attempt to get the wash plate out this first time. Also do note that if you have the washer in agitation with the lid up the entire time, you're going to get water and particles on the top of the lid, so you may want to keep the lid up infrequently when you do this. In my hands is a trampoline spring tool. You can buy these for just a few dollars on Amazon and you can get multiple of them at once. I decided to try these after taking them to the angle grinder and filing down the metal tips just a little bit so that they would fit well into the wash plate. These are able to bite into the plastic holes and around the edges much better than a standard screwdriver. However, at least on this try, I'm not having that great of luck so far. The truth is that when it comes to something like a terribly stuck on wash plate, you have to be willing to spend a little bit more time than effort to get it off, or so we found out with this dastardly wash plate. We filled the tub with water a time or two again and then added more citric acid to it, but at a little lower concentration. Even if we can't quite get the wash plate off yet, we are sure cleaning the tub out in this particular washer. 
And here is attempt number two, using a putty knife first, but it doesn't really grab well underneath the plate. So back to the trampoline spring tool it is. Despite the fact that the plate is still not coming out, you can absolutely feel that the wash plate has become less stuck on than what it was initially. One side of the plate will move upward slightly, but not the other side, and we don't really want to apply too much pressure on one side of the plate or we could heavily damage it. And now we got the wash plate out, guys. I'm so happy we're able to get this out. I will tell you that we actually got it out off screen. My staff did. They put some more citric acid and a orange Zep degreaser, which they just rolled around the tub. They pushed it back and forward until the plate came out. If you put it on an agitation cycle and let it run, make sure you babysit it because if that plate comes off, it could knock around in the tub. So make sure you're careful on it. This is what the citric acid did behind the plate. And we know on the other one that I got video of, this is what ha it looks like underneath when you don't have citric acid. Now, ironically, this plate was much easier to get out of this one because we're shooting this outro on different days. So this, this is awesome. I'm real happy with how the degreaser worked. This is the worst wash plate we've ever had to take apart in our shop and we've taken hundreds of them apart. This was the worst we've ever done. So if our techniques worked for us here, I think they have a good chance of working for you. There's no absolute guarantee on it because sometimes these just can only come off with some sort of air chisel. But hopefully the things we've discussed in this video will give you some new techniques to get wash plates off. And hopefully yours is easier than this one. And you guys have a great day. We'll follow up with another video on maybe how to clean out a washer because the citric acid we used, which uh, is a Millard citric acid, 10 pound bag. This is the best stuff we've ever used. We have a lot of cleaning products and this is probably our favorite now. It's cheap, it's easy to get, and maybe it will be worth buying some just to clean your washer out, if not for the wash plate. So you guys have a great day and we will see you later. Make sure to like and subscribe.